Oh gosh. <laughs> I'll try to explain you better than this. Uh, but hey, 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 Hashnode is actually taking my job of even making why why am I making this tutorial on the first point? But anyways, uh, hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video and welcome to the video where we are going to learn about the flat list in the React Native. So in the React Native, one of the common things that you'll be doing as a mobile app developer is scrolling through a lot of data and these scrolling of the data comes through a variety of lists. Uh, there might be some features you want to list, maybe some course content, maybe some playlist uh, in the Spotify. You just need to scroll out a lot of things. And this is where the point comes up about flat list. You can definitely use scroll view and, and so far we have been talking just about the scroll view. But scroll view is not that performance optimized as the flat list is. The whole idea behind flat list is it doesn't create the whole list in just one go. Whatever you see on the screen, only that much of flat list is being created. The next flat list that, is com that comes up from the bottom of the screen that is created on the go. As you scroll it, that's when that is being created. It consumes less memory and is much more performance optimized. And that is the reason why when you look at the React Native Docs, in the performance section, if you look at the performance overview, it is just nearby. So if you scroll a tiny bit, little bit here, and you'll see that list view initial rendering is too slow or scroll view performance is bad for large lists. So there's a whole article about why you should have and how you can use a less memory for creating these flat lists. And that's where you actually can click on the flat list and read about why you should be using, how you should be using. But I was checking out this Hashnode and they have launched this new uh, Rix. By the way, Hashnode is a sponsor of this free series. A big shout out to them. They have launched this Rix and they have sections just like Discord and I was checking on the React Native just for fun. I entered, uh, why should I use flat list? And it says, if you have a long list of data in your React Native application, you should use flat list instead of scroll view, which is absolutely correct. And it provides performance benefit by rendering only the item that is visible on the screen. So that is just exactly I say to you, they phrase it better. And this minimizes the amount of work required to render your list. So obviously, let's just say you have thousand items to be rendered on a list and your screen can only contain six or seven items, what's the point of rendering the rest of 900, whatever that is, uh, items? So this is much more beneficial. What additionally this has given me is actually a simple example of how you can have this data. We have, instead of this data, we have constant. So we'll, we'll be walking through with some real world example, but this is a good boilerplate code. And this is where they actually refer flat list as a reference and then to offset and render item and this is how you render the item and all of that. So it's pretty easy. You can also go ahead and read from here that what is the implementation and pretty easy. So this is the implementation of the flat list here. I can zoom this, yep, I can zoom this. Uh, so this is what we have, simple flat list, data, render item, key extractor, so pretty easy. So these are compulsory thing that you should have in the flat list and that's it. You can definitely go ahead and ask Ricks about all of this. So. This is all what we'll be studying in this video and we'll be going through. So let's go up here on to our, uh, our VS Code. <laughs> there we go. So in the VS Code, we'll go into app.tsx. We'll just remove this. So there we go, so that we can have. Uh, this will keep import this much of new app screen. No, we don't need this. We can just get rid of this. And this one, yeah, we'll keep it. Okay, we don't need this props with children because we have created this in the component. Uh, so we don't need this either. We definitely don't need this either. And this section is too long of a view. We'll just remove, uh, we don't need this entire section. We'll just remove this. And this one, definitely don't need this one. 100% uh, don't need this one. And this one, safe area. We'll keep the safe area. We'll keep the status bar as well. This scroll view, we can actually get rid of this. So there we go. Uh, we don't have this. So we'll just get rid of this style. I don't need that. And this should be good just for the temporary purpose. I'll just keep a view. And inside this, I'll keep a text. And then I'm going to go ahead and keep a just one here so that it doesn't yell at me and complain at me. There is some style sheet. So I'll be copying style sheet from my notes itself. Just give me a second. And I'll give you these styles. So here are my notes. Copy this and paste this. So the style sheet I have given to you, you can definitely grab it from the GitHub repository. The link is in the description section. You can grab this. There is nothing too much, just some alignments and moving things left and right and all of that. All right, so this seems good, pretty good actually. Now let's go ahead and see that how we are going to proceed into this app. The first thing we need uh, to import the constants. So we're gonna go ahead and say, let's bring in constants, constants. 
So we're going to go ahead and say, let's go ahead and uh, call this one as uh, currency by rupee that will come up from constants. And we'll need the component as well that we have created. So we'll say component. And this will be currency button. So there we go. That component is here. All right. Now we'll be also importing the snack bar as well. So let me just go ahead and walk you through with the React Native snack bar. Uh, there we go. Why are you not shrinking a tiny bit? There we go. So let's go on to Google and we'll show you snack bar react native so this is one package that we'll be using and again the installation package we have discussed quite a lot on to similar kind of a thing uh, but make sure when you read on how it works this is how it works uh, but installation requires you to actually have a sim simple import statement for the ios you actually need to go ahead and install this by cocopod so just go into uh, cd into ios and just run pod install in case you know what you're doing and if you're on mac system otherwise no need for doing that uh, we'll be just copying this, going back onto this one. Let's open this up and let's go ahead and install this. Super easy. Uh, snack bar is nothing in case you want to know about it. It's just a simple kind of a notification kind of a thing that comes up. It supports a lot of color. And eventually in the future, we'll be discussing it a lot, learning it a lot. So I think this is a great point that I simply go ahead and introduce this to a little bit to you. Uh, we'll be simply using a use case of this. So let me just see the example if they have any. Uh, so snack bar show installation. There we go. We'll copy this and we'll read out a little bit later on on that part. All right. Uh, so component is there. We can actually move this component a little up. There we go. And we are also importing the snack bar. Okay. So now let's go ahead and use all the input values and all, everything. So we'll be working on that. So this is our app and uh, this looks okay. We can go ahead and create this as constant as well, but I think this is also okay. Are we exporting this? Yep, we are exporting this. Okay. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and create a couple of states that will take the user input. So pretty easy. We have worked on the, the states a couple of times. So we'll call this as input value. This one will be obviously set input value. This will be simply a part of use state. And from the use states, initially this will be empty, means no strings. Similarly, we'll be having another one uh, and one more. The next one we'll be having is going to be result value. And let's go ahead and copy this. And we'll set this set result value and another one will be target currency target currency and copy this paste it up here go like this target currency all right so our states are there again repeating this for the people who have been paid attention in the last videos uh, use state is simple thing and a simple mechanism in the react and in react native that notifies uh, somebody at a higher level that, hey, now you need to do some manipulation in the visuals. That visual in the web could be a DOM. In the React Native, it's simply a thread. So it says that, hey, I need to update some UI and this is why we actually create the state. So simply like that. Now, obviously, we'll be pressing some buttons. So button needs to be there. And through those, those buttons, we'll be taking the input. So let's go ahead and simply say, what happens when somebody press a button? So we'll be saying button pressed, all right. And with this button pressed, just like this, uh, what is going to happen? First of all, I'll take a target value. So target value. This is going to be of type uh, currency that is going to come to me. And then I'm going to simply go ahead and write a simple piece of code. First of all, what happens if there is nothing into this uh, target value or the input value? So I'll say if there is nothing inside the input value, obviously user hasn't entered anything into the box that we have given to you. In that case, we'll be using our snack bar. Snack bar simply is used to give a pop-up value. Nothing like that, nothing much more crazy. So we'll be saying, hey, let's just go ahead and return a simple snack bar. And we just saw in the documentation that we can use a property of dot show. Now in the show, you have to provide a couple of objects. Usually these objects are defined into some constants or some as a separate file, but these are not too much in our case. So we'll just define them manually. The first one is obviously the text. So we'll be saying that, hey, uh, something like enter a value, value to convert. 
And then the next is background color that we need. So I have a background color in my notes that we'll be entering here, but you can go ahead and use any green or blue, red, whatever the values you want to use. And we'll be having a text color as well. Otherwise, the text color usually is default black. We don't want that. Uh, you can change that. I want black in this case. So I'll be explicitly mentioning that. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, background color. I have actually, I just grabbed them from uicolorpicker.com. So this is the one that we have. All right. Now, this is the first thing that what happens when the button is being pressed. Now, if uh, the button is not like there is something into the input value, what should I do in that case? In that case, obviously, I'll not go into this if statement. I'll go ahead outside of this. So let's just go ahead and create a variable. Let's call this as input amount. That input amount will be grabbing from uh, input value. But this could be a problematic. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this value and we'll be calling this one as parse float. Now this makes a guarantee that the value that I'm working with is actually in a number, not precisely number, but a decimal value number. Okay. Now what happens if this value is not a number? So let's go ahead and handle that case as well. Uh, so let's just say if this is not, is not a number, and a n, and then we'll be passing on input amount. There we go. Now we are making 100% sure that this is actually a true result. So you get the idea. <laughs> there is no need of too much explanation. I want to deal with numbers. That is why too much of safety. That is all what we are doing. All right. So let's go ahead and work on with this. Super simple. Uh, let's just go ahead and call this one as converted value. Yeah, that's fine. And all we're going to do is whatever the input amount that you have given to me, I'll just multiply it with the target value that you are giving to me. And I know this target value has a value. All right. The reason why this is happening is because in the target value, it is a type of currency. And this currency I'm actually bringing in from this type that I know if this is a type of currency, it is 100% going to have a value. That is how it is working. Super simple. Now you understand the chain of why we are doing, how we are doing. All right. Now let's just go ahead and uh, grab the value of it. So because the numbers when are being multiplied in the decimal, they can go really crazy. So let's sort this out. Let's just go ahead and call this one as a result. So result, let's use our backticks like that. We'll be saying, hey, dollar, like this. And uh, let's just say a target value dot symbol. So whatever the symbol is being given to you. And we are going to go ahead and convert that. So we'll be saying again, dollar, just like this. And we'll be saying converted value, whatever the value is being converted, let's go ahead and fix it. So we're going to say two fixed. We'll be explicitly passing on the value of two. And then if you want, you can go ahead and use a money. I'll be using this symbol. So again, in case you want to, otherwise there is no compulsion. So let's just go ahead and save this. Why is it having problem? Invalid character uh, happens. So let's just not use the smileys there. All right. Now, this is not going to do anything because this is getting stored in our local variable. In order to update the UI, we need to use a state. And that's what we'll be doing next. If this is all converted, let's go ahead and say set result value to whatever the result we got. There we go. Nice and easy. Also, set target currency into the target value dot name. All right. So these things are being adjusted really nice. If this is not happening, because this is the case when I'm able to do the things, there should also be else case here. If the value is not a number, then what should I do? In that case, I'll be using the same snack bar. So let's go ahead and uh, let's use all of this. We want to return this so that it exit our method. Snack bar dot show. And we'll be simply saying something like this, not a valid number to to convert and the value, the background color I have different this time. So I'll just copy it from my notes and we'll paste it. All right. Hope you understand this part. Super easy. Nothing too much complex in this one. All right. So our preparation is done and I'll give you time to actually go ahead and explore a little bit about the RICS on the hash node as well as a little bit about the flat list. Um, make sure you use RICS. It is a great helpful tool. It is validated. It doesn't, doesn't give you just any random information from internet. 
it is a validated data that actually gives you precise result, which is validated by a lot of people that it is accurate information. So go ahead and use RICS and try to read a little bit about the flat list. In the next video, I'll show you that how we can use our own component that we created and we are going to render it as a flat list. In case you want to go ahead of me, uh, I would highly, highly recommend you to at least give it a try. Maybe the app will not work the way you want to be, but it will be a good attempt. So go ahead, give it a try and I'll catch you up in the next video.